This presentation is, is a collective effort by, by me as a flagship leader, but also uh, my co-leaders, the so-called cluster leaders, Michel Dion, Vishnene, and previously also uh, Barbara Wieland that uh, left Hillary in uh, uh, February, I think. And uh, of course, many other, co other colleagues at uh, Hillary, SVU, and ICARDA. Next slide, please. We, thank you. Uh, I'm having a, a similar uh, setup or, or approach as, as Karen. Um, so it's, it's all about healthier uh, livestock, which increases uh, productivity and also the welfare and, and well being of, of animals. We should not forget that. Uh, the challenge is the, the, the livestock health issues. And, there are several things that maybe you not think about every day when you think about he healthy livestock. Livestock, um, healthy livestock produce more per used uh, uh, environmental footprint, so to say, and also per uh, emitted uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, so it's it's a true en environmental climate issue in in keeping animal. Uh, healthy. And of course, more obviously, it jeopardizes uh, livelihood and food security. Uh, sick animals produce less or they, they die. And then also, of course, the risk for, for public health issue, these zoonotic diseases that are infections that are transferred from, from animals to humans, and also antimicrobial resistance can move the same path. And this is these challenges or issues are affecting millions of small-scale farmers. So our approach at large is to create things to, that are context relevant, that is extremely important, uh, that are holistic, taking care of uh, several dimensions like uh, reproductive performance and also try to integrate uh, basic animal husbandry into this, like uh, feeding and, uh, and things like that. Uh, otherwise, we will not um, reach the, the genetic potentials that, that uh, Karen so nicely uh, explained about. And it has to, the means have to be acceptable by the farmers. So our research then, <clears throat> it's to, to put several things into what we call the herd health packages. And the first element is a dialogue with farmers or community individuals, farmers and community. Because the things that we we um, uh, identify is the, the issue is is the farmer is extremely important. There is might not be the, the same things as officials in an office in the country or in the, the county or even internationally find out to, to be the best. So, so this kind of dialogue is, is very, very important. And then, of course, also uh, surveys of pathogens, disease-causing uh, um, uh, organisms and, and proper diagnosis for, for these things, and which has been a very, very strong component in the, in the, um, or the strongest component in, in the whole flagship is the development of vaccines for, for priority diseases, which might not uh, be, be uh, how to say, discovered or developed in other parts of the world because there's no commercial interest. And then also to promote the rational use of, of um, antimicrobials. This is a very strong uh, captive thing. And I think the general discourse in, in the world about livestock and, and antimicrobials is, is a very skewed, it's, it's, it should be a rational use rather than reducing as, as such, I think. Uh, we also have developed disease control uh, models for, for, for controlling diseases, which could be used on a, a higher level in institutions and so on. And then this herd health management, the husbandry-like thing, uh, like uh, reproduction and reconnecting to, to um, to the farmers during the course of, of the process. And finally, also, uh, we have developed and tested uh, delivery models of both uh, products and, and services. 
So this ends up in a, a set of interventions. You can divide them into technical ones like, like uh, vaccines, for instance, capacity development, uh, like um, use of antimicrobial or herd health management, and then also institutional ones like these strategy models uh, for, for uh, controlling diseases. And uh, the goal is ultimately to promote uh, technologies that are reduced women's, women's uh, workloads, uh, reduce risk for public health and close the yield gap, uh, cost of productivity extremely low as you see, as you know. So the impact bundling animal health services, OIE guidelines on vaccines and public private uh, partnership, where we have um, contributed to, to new guidelines there, uh, community conversations and gender. Uh, gender has been a very mainstream thing in all our research. Uh, I would say almost before we had gender specialists in, in, into the, to the flagship. Uh, East Coast fever immunization protocols, uh, and maybe one of the best things with all more concrete th things is, is to uh, a toolbox for PPR, uh, P PPR uh, a, a manual or a toolbox that is widely available on the, on the internet. So, um, and there are of course other things that we have, have developed. IVR and things. <laughs> Okay, mobile phone based uh, diagnosis and communication system in the pipeline. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think I'll stop there. Great, thank you very much, all. So that was the health, uh, the health egg. So the health, so it's really that package of various interventions um, brought together that really make a difference in terms of uh, livelihood again, but also the animal health and the animal welfare and the productivity. So super good, we're going to do the same thing, everybody. We're going to post you another chat question. I want you to reflect again, where and how can you see this health advance or this, maybe it's a package, the health package being most widely applied. Where and how can you see this making the most difference, being most applied? And I'm hoping that Sahai, thank you very much, Sahai, for posting that. If you could post just as before, what do you think of this? What, are you, what do you see as the, the, the widest application? If you could post in the chat, we'll take another minute to post it in the chat. We're a very good time, offers lots of excellent time, despite the, uh, the voiceover from the pigs. It sounded like the Ugandans. We had some pigs uh, participating in, in that session just now. So well, tell us where and how can this, Help advance be most widely applied. Where do you see it? Yep. So Ronnie, thank you guys. All stakeholders can apply this. Okay. So I guess that's that. That's the effect of a bundle or a package, right? Um, EPR, yes, in the Sahel. So type is where and how do you see this being most applied? Yep. Sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you, Peter. It can be which situations? Doesn't have to be geographical um, things. All livestock system spreads, thank you. So it seems like it's a very wide application. Any other comments? Where and how can you see this being most widely applied? Sounds like, yeah. Yeah, we've seen some comments there, commercializing. Also, any thoughts yourself on all of this? Do you, from your own perspective, do you see some kind of target? If you look for the future, where would, where would all of this, is there any, are there any limitations at all for this egg? No, of course not. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but what, what, what I think is that it's a little bit of a rethink when it comes to, to livestock health in low income countries. We have focused very much in, on, on, on single diseases. Uh, where we can measure antibodies and find a vaccine and see and so, which is super good, of course. I've done this myself in my previous career, and so to focus on one disease at a time, because it's not manageable to 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 do this kind of 
call it a holistic or integrated approach. It's, it's, it's very tough, but it's, it's nice because it's, it deals with those, what we call the endemic diseases that are present all the time. And there is a lot of, it's not so much um, money investment, it's more investment in skills and so. So, so I think that that kind of approach uh, and it's also integrated with other, uh, with, with, with feed, with genetics and so on. Um, it's, it's a hard one, but it's highly, highly relevant. And I think it, it could really pay off.